Good evening. It's the 14th of August 2022. Welcome to Prime Time News here on TV1. For the News First team where the people come first, I'm Senita Sena Nayaka. We have a packed bulletin lined up for you this evening. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Chinese ship en route to Hambantota. India-China relations seeing a positive impetus, says Chinese ambassador in India. The unusual rise in price of eggs and poultry. Mushroom and soy cultivations at risk. All party government to be established next week. Many parties yet to make a decision. Ministry of Public Security lifts ban on six international organizations and 316 individuals. As it was mentioned in the headlines, the Yuan Bank 5 vessel is currently sailing towards Sri Lanka. The ship was granted clearance to call at the Hambantota port for seven days starting Tuesday. The Yuan Wang 5, a ballistic missile and satellite tracking ship in China's research vessel fleet, was granted clearance on the 12th of July to call at a Sri Lankan port. The ship was initially due to call at the Hambantota port on the 11th of August. However, the foreign ministry officially requested the Chinese authorities to defer the arrival of the vessel without publicizing any reason. Subsequently, the Chinese ship slowed down and was passing over the 90 East Ridge, a mid-ocean ridge on the Indian Ocean flow, named for its near-parallel strike along the 90th meridian at the center of the Eastern Hemisphere. With permission being granted for the Yuan Wang 5 to call at the Hambantota port yesterday, the ship began sailing towards Sri Lanka again. Why is there so much controversy over the arrival of this ship to the Sea of Sri Lanka? Instead of a mere arrival of a ship, this situation should be looked at as a decisive event that will determine the future of Sri Lanka amid a tug of war between global powers. This incident will be a litmus test for Sri Lanka's foreign policy that will determine our place in the world. That is one of the many reasons why the leaders of our country must take sound decisions regarding this extremely sensitive matter. The first ever Dornier reconnaissance aircraft from India to enhance the maritime surveillance capabilities of Sri Lanka will be inducted to the Sri Lanka Air Force fleet tomorrow in line with the Indian Independence Day. Documents produced to the cabinet last month shows that after the induction of the aircraft, a five-member technical team from India will arrive in the country. These naval observations, survey and rescue operations are due to take place within the exclusive economic zone in the sea of Sri Lanka. Chinese ambassador to India, Sun Weidong, said on Saturday that India and China are seeing a positive impetus to ties given two meetings between the foreign ministers in the past few months and Prime Minister Narendra Modi's attendance at the BRICS summit in June. Sun said China expects to welcome back Indian students to resume their studies in the country in the near future. However, Indian External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar recently speaking at a Belt and Road Initiative event said that India-China relations cannot be normal unless the border situation is. He added that if China disturbs the peace and tranquility in border areas, it will impact relations further. Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland says India's generous and multifaceted assistance to Sri Lanka to help it deal with its unprecedented economic crisis is heartening. According to an article in The Hindu, Patricia Scotland says India's assistance to Sri Lanka, quote, exemplifies both the spirit and values of the Commonwealth, end quote. She added, quote, in spirit we are a family of nations and families rally to help one another in times of need. Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently expressed India's support for the quest of the people of Sri Lanka for stability and economic recovery through established democratic means, institutions and constitutional framework, end quote. 
Moreover, she said the unprecedented challenges Sri Lanka is facing have required and still require the dedication and fortitude of its leaders as well as the support of the international community. India has extended assistance worth over 3.8 billion US dollars to Sri Lanka this year to help it deal with the economic crisis. Patricia Scotland was in India on a four-day visit last week and held talks with her Indian interlocutors on various regional and global issues like climate change, post-pandemic economic recovery and ways to boost trade. The Pakistani community in Sri Lanka celebrated the Diamond Jubilee of Independence of Pakistan today. During an event held to celebrate the occasion at the Pakistan High Commission in Colombo, the Pakistan High Commissioner commented on the visiting Chinese-built Pakistani-guided missile frigate PNS Taimur. Pakistan High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, retired Major General Umar Farooq Burki, hoisted the national flag of Pakistan in a vibrant ceremony at the Pakistan High Commission in Colombo. I also uh, welcome uh, PNS Taimur, which has docked about two, two to three days back, and the staff. Our foreign policy is based on the vision of our founding father, which is friendship towards all and enormity towards none. We believe in having social cordial relations with all countries and especially so with the countries in our neighborhood. Both Pakistan and Sri Lanka are key members of SARC. And both countries share strong bonds of friendship and brotherhood since they came into being. We have stood with our Sri Lankan brothers and sisters through thick and thin, and so have they. And we will continue to do so in future as well. The event was attended by diplomats, members of the Pakistan community, local dignitarian and officers of PNS Taimur, which is port calling Colombo these days. Why has the prices of eggs and chicken increased? We'll bring you the details right after this short commercial break. Islon gum chutta. Hema gidar rakam city ayu tu jalan ala kar mikaya. Then rakam grocery and miladi gan. Enjoy a highest return for your investments from LB Finance right now. Earn a highest interest rate of 23% for eight months fixed deposits. LB yasay siru an unparalleled reward for a trusted deposit. Welcome back to the news. In the recent past, the United Nations, World Food Program, and several other international organizations warned Sri Lanka of a threat against food security in the country in the coming months rather owing to the acute food shortages and rising food prices in the market. The UN World Food Program said with Sri Lanka facing its worst economic crisis since independence, there is a high risk of the nation experiencing a serious food crisis. In the meantime, UNICEF made an appeal from the international community to assist them in their efforts to save 1.7 million vulnerable children in Sri Lanka by providing nutrition, health care, safe drinking water, education and mental health services in Sri Lanka. Experts are of the opinion that protein-rich foods like meat, fish, milk and eggs will be the first to disappear from a diet during an economic crisis. What is the market situation today? While the nutritional value of the average Sri Lankan diet continues to decline, the price of protein-rich foods like meat, fresh milk and eggs are increasing every day. The market retail price of an egg is 60 rupees. A kilo of chicken is between 1,350 to 1,400 rupees. What do vendors feel about these price hikes? Vendors 
can the public afford this? Me dosala me chicken gora me ganang ekka balu gora apni attarma chicken kan namaru attarma me malu kan la tamaru. Kodi la me gora denda thi ni bittare ya ni dada kaale malu chicken okka ma gana. Dupat ni ni sunda kan la thei ne. Chera nangi thi vadi thi kaata ke yana deva gila ne mahate. Was this the result of arbitrary decisions taken by the previous government rejecting the options of agriculture experts? What is the real reason for the increase in poultry prices in the market? With the reduction in maize production in the country, we didn't receive enough maize for animal feed during the last year. With this, our production costs went up and this continues. Our production has also reduced by 50%. We have to allocate 77% of our cost to buy animal feed. We are forced to import certain types of animal feed since we cannot find them in the country. But since March, we couldn't do this owing to the dollar shortage. In addition, there is a shortage of medicines and vaccines for animals as well. The fuel crisis also caused a huge blow to our industry. Why is there a hike in egg prices? We bear a cost of 45 rupees to produce an egg. We have to feed a chicken for at least five months in order to obtain eggs from it. It costs us around 2.5 million during these five months for just the animal feed. In order to reduce this cost, we used maize as a substitute to mix with the animal feed. Since we cannot find maize, we started using paddy as an alternative to maize. And without food, our egg production has reduced from 80% to 40%. What is the long-term plan of the Minister of Agriculture to solve this crisis? The main reason for this shortage of animal feed is the decision taken to ban the importation of chemical fertilizers. This has affected the dairy industry as well. As a short-term solution, we are hoping to import maize. We have given permission to import this and it will be a temporary arrangement. We hope to cultivate more maize during the next maha season. How will the Trade Minister solve this issue? We have to introduce substitutes for chicken and eggs. As the Trade Ministry, we intervened and told them to request for the importation of maize from India under the Indian credit line. We are hoping to support them in this endeavour. Shanta Niriala, the chairman of the Consumer Affairs Authority, says he will conduct an immediate investigation into the price of egg and poultry products in the market and will take the necessary steps going forward. Nutritionists point out that future generations could face a severe nutritional deficiency. With the inflation in the country, I don't think the people are focusing on the nutritional value of food. Three main factors need to be fulfilled to prepare a nutritious meal. Proteins, lipids, carbohydrates and vitamins. A nutritious meal must consist of these nutrients. According to the scientific data available to us, attention must be given to nutrition in the first 8,000 days after birth of a child. Attention must be given to the nutrition of a human until the age of 22. A person weighing more than 50 kilograms needs 40 grams of protein per day. Therefore, there is a higher requirement for animal protein. With the prevailing economic crisis, there's a problem when it comes to the supply of animal protein. Today, the price of eggs is between 60 to 65 rupees. A kilogram of chicken is more than 2,000 rupees. After a person spends his or her daily wage on these food items, they will first forego the proteins. This crisis is worse than it looks as people sacrifice the proteins first. Serious problems can arise in terms of food nutrition in the future. Proteins are needed for the human body to grow and develop. Proteins are essential for the functions of hormones, puberty and the growth of fetuses. Therefore, many health issues can arise in the future. If immunity reduces, transmissible diseases can spread. I urge the authorities to reduce the price of food items and provide relief to the consumers. Acquiring mushrooms and soy, which are alternatives for protein-rich food items, is also no longer possible due to the issues faced by the agriculture sector. Galkiriagama is an area that has been at the forefront in soybean cultivations. Soybeans are a food item that is rich in proteins. However, soybean cultivations have been damaged due to the shortage of fertilizer and fuel. <laughs> Bolkaral tamati ini. 
तेल के हुआ टाइम वा कुमी सातुम मार देने वेन्ने कुमी नासक बाल गलती हिंदा तमा Providing water to these crops has become a challenge as fuel is not available to power their water motors. Mushrooms are a nutritious vegetable rich in proteins. Mushroom cultivations in Dimulagala which started in 2018 have now been disrupted. This project provides for 40 families and fulfills the nutritional requirement of many other families. Eka para genalla dunna badu. Hadapu ewa okkoma south una. Thuru ewa ali kadala kewa. Ne rajayen kisima hau haranak udawwak neha. Kisima niladari etta wenakan aawet neha. Kaatawat karaganda deyak nathuwa thama inni. Aamudrawwe tike hari sapeya ganda udawwak karanda kiya In more news, the Sunday Times reports that attempts are underway to pass a cabinet paper to compensate officials who had been subjected to political uh, I beg your pardon, who has been subjected to alleged political victimization under the Yahapalane government. The Sunday Times reports that a number of Sri Lanka Podujana Peramana parliamentarians have pushed for approval for a cabinet paper recommending compensation of over 117 million rupees for state officials who had been subjected to alleged political victimization from 2015 to 2019. According to the report, the cabinet paper was drafted by former Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa in line with the recommendations of a committee headed by the former Chief Justice Asoka De Silva. However, was not sub Submitted for approval due to Rajapaksa's resignation on the 9th of May. Yet, according to the report, attempts are now being made to submit the paper to the cabinet after Prime Minister Dinesh Gunawardena assumed office. Moreover, the report states that it understands that senior SLPP members are attempting to secure compensation for officials identified by the committee. A total of 27 officials are due to receive monetary compensation, which ranges from 700,000 rupees to 25 million rupees. as per recommendations of the committee previously we brought you details of the situation in the country in terms of food security and the agricultural sector on the political front discussions are being held on the formation of an all party government what is happening to the formation of this all party government There are 15 political parties that represent the people in parliament. The Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna has already decided to support the government. In addition to the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, the EPDP or Elam People's Democratic Party led by Douglas Devananda, the TMVP party of Sivanesathurai Chandrakantan alias Pillayan, the Muslim National Alliance led by Ali Sabri Rahim and the National Congress represented by ALAM Athaulla are already representing the government the united national party that has only one seat in parliament is also among the parties that support the government the samagi janabala vegya recently announced that they will not accept ministerial positions in the government but will support the development program of the country through a strong committee system The Tamil National Alliance has already announced that they will not be joining the government. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party announced that they will be joining the government if certain conditions are met. The All Ceylon Tamil Congress represented by Gajendra Kumar Ponnambalam announced that they will not join the government. The Jatika Janabala Vegya informed the president recently that they will not be joining the All Party government. The Ape Janabala Vegya party and the Tamil Makkal Thesiya Kootani has not yet decided if they will join the government although rishad badurdin and rauf hakim entered parliament on the samagi janabala vegya ticket there are two mps from the all ceylon makkal congress and the sri lanka muslim congress which are parties led by them these parties have not yet decided on whether or not they will join the all party government the tamil progressive alliance led by mano ganeshan has not decided if they will support the government against such a backdrop How can an all party government be formed? Merata metenta patkarand mulleche du several corrupt officials who were responsible for bringing this country to this place are still secretaries to ministries this country cannot be developed one bit with these people there will be no faith even within the state sector therefore if steps are taken to address this we are ready to strengthen an all party government akshikandukata api shakti laba denna sudana ंग अपट आंडे अमेरिका दूर आरगे सहयोग 
ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಜನತಾ ವಿಮುಕ್ತಿ ಬೇರೆ ಮೂರು ಯಾರು ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ದ ಜೆ ವಿ ಪಿ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಹವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಗವರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಎನಿ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಮೀ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅ ಜಂಬು ಕ್ಯಾಬಿನೆಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಕಮಿಟೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಬ್ ಕಮಿಟೀಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ದಿ ಆಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಚಾರ್ಮನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಬ್ ಕಮಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋಸ್ ಚಾರ್ಮನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿ ಆಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಟೂ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎಂಟೈಟಲ್ ಟು ರಿಸೀವ್ ದ ಪರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕ್ಯಾಬಿನೆಟ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಬೋಟ್ ratagana adre if they love the country and believe that we should come out of this crisis why are they opposing the formation of an all party government we will unite all forces and form this all party government this week janivara mo godagana me satya tulta sarvapakshi karaje itamat nin these mps are being shamelessly auctioned off for money they are being sold like cats dogs or pigs This is a crying shame. We believe that if an all party government is to be formed, this process of personally approaching MPs and buying them off for a price should stop. And discussions must be held with the party leaders on a policy level and an agreement must be reached with them. You must not go in the shade of the night and personally buy off MPs. Horra rahase gila ratri pagavadila adagene nekata nemei me yannona. The opposition leader says the SJB led alliance rejects the all party cabinet of the incumbent government which is on the wrong path. We need an all party solution not an all party government. Neither the Samagi Jana Balavegya nor the Samagi Jana Alliance need any ministerial positions. Let's put a stop to wrong decisions. We reject the all party cabinet of this government which is heading in the wrong direction. If the government is ready, we are ready to get on the right path. sitting in the opposition and not being a burden to the country we are ready to provide the necessary strength to lift this country through parliament we would like to deliver this positive message in more political news head of the tamil makkal thesiya kuttanai cb vigneshwaran has told the president that they will support the government from the opposition until a process is started in earnest satisfying the tamil community he made this statement following a recent meeting with the president and prime minister in colombo in a press release the head of the tamil makkal thesiya kootani cv vigneshwaran said president vikram singh's idea was all mps from provinces must govern the respective provinces under the chairmanship of the governors in terms of a national agenda president vikram singh had referred to austria as an example but according to vigneshwaran's release his example was inappropriate as austria is a federal country during the meeting vigneshwaran said no land should be appropriated by the central government in the provinces except with the consent and concurrence of the respective provincial government and there was no response from the president according to the press release president vikram singh appeared to be in a hurry to rope in jafna mps to be part of the government vigneshwaran highlighted that it may be an attempt to showcase it to geneva the release goes on to state that the president also requested vigneshwaran to share a document which outlines the proposal on how money could be channeled into sri lanka from the diaspora it also pointed out that the 13th amendment to the constitution should be implemented in full as a temporary measure until satisfactory constitutional reforms are made with the country undergoing an unprecedented crisis many sri lankans are in hunger due to high cost of living people who face numerous difficulties to get by on a daily basis are still hopeful for a better tomorrow news first file this report <laughs> Amila Nishantha and H A Sunitha take care of their two children while living in an old building that they call home. The building the family resides in is the Manampitiya Cooperative Building in Polonnaruwa. The rent for living in this building is 2500 rupees per month. The two parents are daily wage earners. As the building does not have electricity the family used to light a lamp during the night but today this family has to spend the night in the dark as they do not have oil to light a lamp these children later resorted to using a borrowed electric lamp to study their daughter is due to sit for the grade 5 scholarship exam this year 
their son is only in grade 2. Nishant, who sustained injuries to his leg due to a train accident, is unable to work properly. I knocked my leg on a train while standing on a platform in Kalania. My leg is broken in four. I am unable to do heavy work. It has been two months since we got here. It is difficult to provide for my daughter and son. I cannot afford books for their education. We cannot afford a torch for them. Food and medicine is also expensive. We don't have electricity as well. Their accumulated electricity bill has surpassed 20,000 rupees. The family's only hope for a better tomorrow is their children, who are also left without an option but to study in the dark and even travel to school without shoes or slippers. In a country that is so rich in natural resources, why are people living here suffering so much? The story of Nishantha Kumara's family is only one among countless others. Isn't it our responsibility to create a path for a brighter tomorrow and to break the barriers brought about by poverty? News first with the people. We'll go in for another commercial break. Stay with News First. Earn a highest interest rate of 23% for 8 months fixed deposits. LB Yasei Siru. Welcome back to the news. The Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit says, in a democratic nation, politicians should not tamper with the law. They don't punish the political leaders for their wrongdoings, but they always punish the innocent laymen. In a democratic nation, the law should not be tampered with. The law is like the foundation stone of a democratic nation. Politicians especially should not be allowed to do this. Until we achieve this, we will not be able to rescue our country from this mess. He also commented on the 2019 April 21st attacks and its subsequent investigations. Although they stopped the protests at Golfe screen, our struggle will continue. The reports submitted by the parliament committee appointed by the incumbent president to probe the attacks stated that there was a grand conspiracy behind these attacks. This is included in bold letters on the third page of the executive summary of this report. The president is duty bound to provide an explanation on this as this committee was appointed by him. Therefore I urge the president to be honest. Explain this report. We will only accept you if you do this. This is the only way to wipe off the tears of these victims. Tell us what really happened on the day of these attacks. We don't want to punish them. We don't want revenge, but we have the right to know the truth. The Cardinal expressed these views while attending a ceremony at St. Anthony's Shrine in Cochica de Colombo to hand over the funds donated by His Holiness Pope Francis as aid to the victims of the Easter Sunday attacks. The Apostolic Ambassador of Sri Lanka, Archbishop Brian Udegwe, was also present. Amidst such trying circumstances, this function is an assurance that the Universal Church has not forgotten the Easter Sunday attack victims in their needs. We realize that this tragedy caused damage not only to the direct victims, but also to the entire nation. The Sri Lankan government has lifted the ban imposed on six proscribed organizations. The Defence Ministry said that an amendment was made to the list of designated persons under Regulation 4.7 of the United Nations Regulations No. 1 of 2012. Accordingly, the Global Tamil Forum, British Tamil Forum, Canadian Tamil Congress, Australian Tamil Congress, Tamil Elam People's Federation, Tamil Youth Organization and the World Tamil Coordinating Committee will be removed from the list. Meanwhile, 15 organizations and 316 individuals have been named and blacklisted as banned organizations in Sri Lanka. These organizations are Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam or LTTE, Tamil Rehabilitation Organization also known as TRO, Tamil Coordinating Committee or TCC, World Tamil Movement also known as WTM, Transnational Government of Tamil Elam or TGTE, 
World Tamil Relief Fund or WTRF Headquarters Group or HQ Group National Tawhid Jamaat or NTJ Jamaat e Millat e Ibrahim also known as JMI Bilayat as Silani National Council of Canadian Tamil also known as NCCT Tamil Youth Organization also known as TYO Darul Ada alias Jamiul Adar Mosque Sri Lanka Islamic Student Movement also known as SLISM and Save the Pearl Society The Ministry of Public Security says that necessary measures are being taken to extradite Nadun Chintaka or Harakkata a drug trafficker arrested in Dubai the Ministry of Public Security states that it has now been confirmed that the smuggler had been arrested in Dubai. Many organized criminals and drug traffickers connected to various crimes have fled to Dubai and India, which according to the Ministry of Public Security has become a safe haven. The ministry further said that necessary measures are being taken to bring back 12 more organized criminals who have fled to foreign countries. Moreover, information has been revealed about an increased tendency of Sri Lankan criminals to flee to Dubai. Recently, a couple involved in a murder in Rathmalana were arrested at the Katnaika airport while trying to flee to Dubai. The Ministry of Public Security says that they are paying close attention to such incidents. Three elephant carcasses were discovered in a field in Pudukkulama Mihintale this afternoon. The carcasses include the body of a tusker. Following a tip by area residents, the body of a tusker and two wild elephant carcasses were discovered by Anuradhapura wildlife officers in the Mihintale Police Division. The tusker was 15 years of age, the others were 15 and 5 years of age. <laughs> The pachyderm remains were found in a field in Pudukulama village. It is suspected the animals died due to electrocution. The third phase of the Divisavia program supported by LOLC Holdings continues in a bid to help the worst affected by the economic crisis in the country. On the ninth day of the third phase, essential food packages were distributed to the poverty-stricken families in the Kalutara district. The Divisavia program identifies families that are facing serious issues economically and provides them with much needed relief packages. In your international news, Bangladesh, one of the world's fastest growing economies, has raised fuel prices by more than 50% in just a week. Bangladesh blames rising oil prices on the wake of the war in Ukraine. Diesel and kerosene have also risen by 42.5 percent. BBC reports that locals are hampered as they are queuing up for fuel. Thousands of people have taken to the streets in protest as another South Asian nation faces a growing financial crisis. In July, Bangladesh, whose economy had been lauded as one of the fastest growing in the world, became the third South Asian nation to seek a loan from the International Monetary fund after Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Indian billionaire Rakesh Junhanwala, who was also known as India's Warren Buffett, has died at the age of 62. The cause of Indian billionaire Rakesh Junjunwala's death was a kidney failure. According to Forbes, he was an investor who began stock trading while still in college. Junjunwala's early investments paid off, with his net worth standing at $5.8 billion at the time of his death. He was part of a generation of investors who benefited from the historic 1991 reforms, which opened up India's economy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led the tributes to Junjunwala, who was steadfastly bullish on Indian stock markets. Isi Patana College Colombo were crowned the 2022 school's rugby league winners today. 
They did so by getting the better of defending champions, I beg your pardon, by defeating champions Royal College Colombo. The decisive super round encounter to decide the champions of the school's rugby league tournament was worked off at the Havelock Park in Colombo today. Isi Patana remains undefeated after winning all six games held since the preliminary round. Royal College lost just one game. Now in the first half of the game, Royal College were on top, ending the half on 10-6. In the second half, Isi Patana took over, scoring 15 points. Royal managed just five points in the second. Ultimately, the undefeated Isi Patana side clinched the match 21-15. They have also regained the major Milroy Fernando Memorial Shield. EC Patana College have not won the tournament since 2017, while Royal College were crowned champions in the last tournament which was held in 2019. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Prime Time News here on TV1. For more details on these stories, you can log on to our website, that is www.newsfirst.lk. For the News First team, where the people come first, I've been Sunny the Sena Take care and stay safe.